How to determine X and Y components of forces. Hey folks, before we proceed with today's discussion, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell to be notified for more upcoming videos. This time, I will be discussing how to determine X and Y components of force systems. This is under engineering mechanics. To begin with, I would like you to observe all the figures in your screen right now. You can see that there were four direction of forces. This direction of forces helps us to determine if our force is either positive or negative. We will be discussing them one by one so that we can clearly understand the concepts of each direction. We begin with the up to the right direction. If the force is going up to the right, the X component of the force will be positive. And, the Y component is also positive. Second, the up to the left direction. If the force is going in this direction, its X component is negative, while the Y component is positive. Third, the down to the left direction. If the force is going in this direction, its X component is negative, the same as its Y component. Lastly, the down to the right direction. If the force is going in this direction, its X component is positive while its Y component is negative. Again, you have to be familiarized with these four directions of forces because you will be needing these for the upcoming lessons you will be tackling in engineering mechanics. Now, the question is, how can we apply this concepts? This time, I will be showing you problems, starting from simple to complex so that you will easily understand the lesson. Now, let us solve this first problem. A force of 300 pounds is directed up to the left as shown in the figure. Determine the X and Y components of the force. Again, if you recall our discussion a while ago, the force that is given is going up to the left direction. We discussed a while ago that if the force has this direction, the X component will be negative. While its Y component is positive. After knowing this, we can now solve for our X component. To solve for X component, we are going to use the formula, force times cosine theta. Be reminded that in solving the X component, we always use the function cosine. You need to take note of that. Now, the theta value is equal to our angle. If you can see in the figure, we have 300 pounds force and an angle of 30 degrees. Now, we just substitute these values to our formula. We now have force of negative 300 pounds times cosine 30. Why negative? Again, it is going up to the left direction and we said a while ago that if the force is going in this direction, the X component is negative. You can flash backward this video if you would like to check. Now, we solve for the X component. We have a final answer for our X component of negative 259.81 pounds. Next, we solve for its Y component. To solve for it, we will use the formula, force times sine theta. You have to be reminded that in solving the Y component, the function to be used is sine. Now, we simply substitute the value of force and theta to our formula. We now have 300 pounds times sine 30. We have a positive value for our force because the direction of the force is going up the left. We simply solve, and we now have a final answer of 150 pounds. That is now the solution for our first problem. Let us proceed to our next problem. Determine the components of the 400 pounds force directed down to the right at a slope of 3 to 5 as shown in the figure. If you noticed, instead of having the angle, what is given was the slope of the force. If you remember our first sample, what is given was the angle. Now, the question is, how can we solve the X and Y components with the slope? The solution is simple. You only have to remember your past lessons in geometry. If you remember, we have to first solve for our hypotenuse. To solve for that, we simply recall the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. It has a formula, c is equal to the square root of a square plus b square. Now, we can obviously see the dimensions of our slope, and we simply substitute it to our formula. 
we now have c is equal to the square root of 3 square plus 5 square. We simply solve and we have a value for our hypotenuse of 5.83. After solving the hypotenuse, we can now solve for the x and y components. First, for our x component, we will be using the formula, force multiplied to x all over the hypotenuse. The x value is the value of the horizontal line in the triangle, which is 5. We now have, positive 400 is the value of our force multiplied to 5 all over 5.83. We have a positive value for our force because the force is going down to the right direction. We now have a value for our x component is 343.05 pounds. Next, we solve for its y component. To solve for y component, we will be using the formula, force multiplied to y all over hypotenuse. The value for y is the vertical line in the triangle which is 3. We simply substitute the values and we now have, negative 400 multiplied to 3 all over the hypotenuse of 5.83. Again, we have a negative value for our force because the direction of the force is going down to the right direction. Now. We simply solve and we have a final value for our y component is negative 205.83 pounds. That is now the solution in solving the x and y component of force if the given is slope. Let us now proceed to more complex problem. What if there is an angle and slope given in a force system? We take this problem 3 as a sample. If you noticed, the slope and the angle is given in the force system. It states that we are to determine the x and y components of each of the forces shown in the figure. If you noticed, we have three forces. Force F, Force T, and Force P. According to the problem, we will be solving the x and y components of each of these three forces. We begin to solve the x and y components of the force F. Again, force F has the slope given instead of the angle. It means that we have to solve for it hypotenuse using the equation, the square root of x square plus y square. We now have, the square root of 5 square plus 13 square. The answer is 13.93. After solving the hypotenuse, we can now solve for its x component. Again, the formula is, force times x all over hypotenuse. We simply substitute the values. We now have, negative 195 pounds multiplied to 5 all over 13.93. We have a negative value for the force because the direction is going up to the left direction. We simply solve it. We now have a final answer for x component of negative 69.99 pounds. Next, let us solve for the y component. To solve, we will use the formula, force times y all over hypotenuse. We simply substitute the values and we now have, force of 195 pounds multiplied to 13 all over 13.93. We have a positive value for the force because the force is going up to the left direction. We now have an answer for our y component to be 181.98 pounds. That's is now the solution in solving the x and y component of force f. Next. Let us solve for the x and y component of force T. To solve for its x component, we will be using the formula force times cosine theta. We simply substitute and we now have, negative 200 cosine 40. We have a negative value for our force because the force is going down to the left direction. We now solve it and we had an answer of negative 153.21 pounds. Next. Let us solve for its y component. To solve for the y component, we will be using the formula, force times sine theta. We simply substitute the values and we now have, negative 200 sine 40. We have a negative value for our force because the force is going down to the left direction. We now solve it and we have a final value for our y component is negative 128.56 pounds. That is now the solution for the x and y components of force T. For our last force which is force P. To get for its x component, we will be using the formula, force times cosine theta.
We simply substitute our values, and we now have 195 cosine 30. We have a positive value for our force because the direction of the force is going down to the right direction. We simply solve and we now have a final answer of 168.87 pounds. Next, we solve now for our Y component. To solve for our Y component, the formula to be used is force times sine theta. We simply substitute the values and we now have negative 195 sine 30. We have a negative value for our force because the direction of the force is going down to the right direction. We simply solve and we now have an answer of negative 97.5 pounds. That is now the solution in solving the X and Y components of force P. In here, I provided the summary of the answers for the X and Y components of force F, T and P. Next, let us have another problem to solve. Looking at the figure, we have three forces. We have force T, force P and force F. The first force that we are going to solve will be force T. Again, the first thing we need to do is to solve for its hypotenuse. Which is, the square root of 2 square plus 3 square. We now have 3.61. After solving the hypotenuse, we are now ready to solve for its X component. We use the formula, force times X all over hypotenuse. We simply substitute the values and we now have negative 700 multiplied to 2 all over 3.61. We have a negative value for our force because the direction of the force is going up to the left. We simply solve and we now have a value for our X component of negative 387.81 pounds. Next, let us solve for its Y component. We use the formula, force times Y all over the hypotenuse. We simply substitute the values and we now have 700 multiplied to 3 all over 3.61. We have a positive value for our force in Y component because its direction is going up to the left. We simply solve and we now have an answer of 581.72 pounds. That is now the values for our X and Y components for the force T. Next, we proceed in solving the X and Y components of force P. To solve for its x component, we will use the formula, force times cosine theta. We simply substitute the values and we now have, 250 cosine 60. We have a positive value for the force because the direction is going up to the right. We simply solve and we now have a final answer for our x component of 125 pounds. Next, let us solve for its y component. To solve for that, we will be using the formula, force times sine theta. We simply substitute the values and we now have 250 sine 60. We have a positive value for our force because the direction of the force is going up the right. We simply solve and we now have a value for our Y component of 216.51 pounds. That is now the solution for the X and Y component of force P. Finally, let us solve for the X and Y component of force F. Again, instead of the angle, the slope is given for the force. So the first thing that we are going to do is to solve for the hypotenuse. We simply use the Pythagorean theorem. We now have, the square root of the square of 1 plus the square of 2. And the value for our hypotenuse is 2.24. After solving the value for the hypotenuse, we can now solve for the components. We begin with the X component. To solve for the X component, we will use the formula, force times X all over the hypotenuse. We simply substitute the values and we now have, 450 times 2 all over 2.24. We have a positive value for our force because the direction of the force is going down to the right direction. We simply solve and we now have a final answer for our X component is 401.79 pounds. Next, for our Y component. The formula that we need to use is force multiplied to Y all over hypotenuse. Substituting the values, we have, negative 450 multiplied to 1 all over 
we have a negative value for our force because the direction is going down to the right direction. We simply solve and we now have an answer of negative 200.89 pounds. That is now the solution in solving the X and Y components for the force F. In here, I will be summarizing the answers for our X and Y components of force T, P and F. First, force T, second, force P, and lastly force F. Thank you for watching.